you up to the little rat man? There you are. I can see you. I can see you. Little rats in my tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you are, you fucker. I'm gonna kill you. Hello and welcome to my long awaited review of this knife, the TRC Polheim MagnaCut G10. Yeah, yeah, this is the fruit that all fell off my trees. It's all unripened, it's hard, it's bitter. Uh, it all got blown off my um, fruit trees. Had the first sort of fruit harvest of the year. Um, but yeah, most of it got uh, trashed with some wild weather that we had recently. And uh, so what was left was for me to chop it all up and give it to the worms. The worms are always hungry for fruit no matter how bad it is. Old rat boy Pete, out know, catching, out catching rats. Oh yeah, let's return him to, to nature. Let's give him to the ants. There you go, ants should send up the signal. There is meat to be had. Also, welcome to my review of the TRC Polheim in MagnaCut. Ew. So this review was a long time coming. Uh, I got this knife in about November last year, so it's been you know, a four-month or so review period. Longer than usual. It coincided really with us trying to take some you know, austerity measures around home, starting to feel the pinch of the cost of living crisis, if you would call it that, or just the current times, you know. And uh, so I became somewhat bashful about reviewing a knife in the, you know, in the multiple hundreds of dollars this would be about sort of 400 or so Australian dollars to get one of these here for what is, you know, a fairly basic tool, a refined tool, but a basic tool and a tool that you probably already have iterations of. I'd be inclined to suggest that most people who are coming across TRC are already knife fans, so you're probably already going to have fixed blade knives. So this is really competing amongst a very crowded uh, sector. Uh, even me, I have you know several other four-inch blade, even premium material fixed blade knives. If by some freak coincidence or chance you are indeed shopping for your first really good fixed blade knife, then I'm going to find it a lot easier to tell you that this is an amazing fixed blade knife. It's possibly the best one you can get at the moment in terms of materials and construction and and all that. Uh, then great, go ahead. But if you're someone who, and more likely being uh, the viewer that has lots of knives already, then I thought a long review period with extensive testing is probably what I need to do to serve you best as a gear reviewer and assuage my bashfulness about reviewing a fairly expensive product. But first, without any further ado, onion rings. All right, Uncle Pete's down home old style onion rings. So be brutal in selecting your onions for rings. Nice big onions, you're gonna be chucking out the middles or composting the middles. Uh, you're gonna be really selective about making you know, a good sized ring. Uh, three half cups of flour, so I guess one and a half cups of flour. Uh, one and a half cups of milk as well. I usually add a bit of extra flavor to my batter with paprika. So chuck in some paprika, about that much. An egg, of course. You're basically making pancake butter, batter, but without sugar in it. 
Um, so that's sort of what my um, onion ring batter is. And you get it till it's nice and goopy and sticky like that. Uh, and I only had olive oil to deep fry in today, so that's what I used, a whole bunch of olive oil. So cut them into rings, or into, well, cut your onion into circles, I guess, first, and then you'll be pushing out the middle parts and sort of separating them into rings, like so. Just been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, probably my, I don't know, my, my favorite game I've played in a long, long time. Uh, it just, you know, purely nostalgia, seeing that world recreated. It reminds me a bit of like if you'd gone from Super Mario 64 to Super Mario, I don't know, Odyssey. It's like that level of a jump from Ocarina of Time to Breath of the Wild, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, back to the onion rings. You see, you're just using your hands, you're covering each bit of onion as best as you can in the batter, and then you're just letting it sit in the fryer, in the frying oil. And that's pretty much it. Wait till they go brownish. The best thing about olive oil is that it can be composted. Once it's cool. So I'll just put it aside to yell at me while it cools down. Unless of course you're in a rental and your landlord is awful. That way I think your house can have some as a treat. Serve with a burger or whatever. These ones all came about like 90% good. There's a couple of bodgy looking ones there, but they all did taste quite nice. The thing about onions is even if they're slightly burnt, still a great flavor. So I've used this knife for four months so far and I've used it as often as I can uh, in terms of sort of organic happenstance, you know, day to day use. And, uh, and then I've put it into some sort of test scenarios as well. Uh, the blade is held up astoundingly well. I have uh, done numerous acts of abuse to this knife, uh, namely cutting things into the dirt, cutting cardboard against concrete, putting it in the dishwasher multiple times, uh, putting it in a tackle box test, a salty water, steamy, um, sort of hot, salty tackle fishing scenario simulator to test the stainlessness of the steel. I basically wanted to make sure that everything was extreme tested uh, just to make sure that G10 handles didn't start to shrink or come off or move, uh, not you know a huge amount of rust would start to appear. Even the paracord at the back going moldy, anything weird like that at all. I wanted to make sure that I could replicate a realistic situation where someone who bought this knife would then go, "Oh wait, my scale started to fall off. Damn." <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. So I'm pretty certain the amount of things I've put this blade through are going to be um, a fair test of what even abnormal use would entail over a protracted period of time. Because sometimes it is truly the teeth marks of time that wear away at something. You know, you can stuff all the hard use testing into a week period and uh, you know, that's, you know, achieve something. But Sometimes it's simply the malaise that sets in over like a weeks to months period that is where the weaknesses of something really start to show. And after four months, which I think is a pretty fair time, uh, there are very few weaknesses, if any, that are showing in the TRC uh, Polheim. So the steel, the Magna Cut, has held up extremely well. As I said, I've done some pretty bad things to the knife, chiefly of all putting it in the dishwasher, cutting into dirt, cutting into concrete, things like that. And yes, cutting into dirt and cutting into concrete, even on a great steel like MagnaCut is gonna require a resharpen. I've been doing my resharpening with this tool here. I wanted to simulate what something basic someone may have around. This is like a $70 uh, kit to do some rudimentary stone sharpening. It's kind of a teaching kit as well as lots of workshop products are. So I've been keeping it chiefly sharp on this and uh, it's been doing a fine job. And the MagnaCut steel, best thing about MagnaCut is it's not terribly difficult to sharpen, even on pretty basic systems, as long as I would always go with a basic uh, diamond sort of CBN type system. And diamond you know, abrasive stones aren't what they used to be in terms of cost. So you can get things like this workshop with its good abrasives for you know less than a hundred bucks. So I wanted to make sure that uh, you know, if you sunk all your money into the knife and you couldn't therefore sink all your money into a great sharpening system as well, you could keep it 
to a good level of sharpness. You know, if, if not the world's sharpest knife, it's not. But, uh, you know, to a good level of sharpness um, relatively happily, and you certainly can. Uh, the Magna Cut, when it's tuned in nicely, holds an edge for a great amount of time. You know, we're talking 700 to 800 rope cuts, uh, you know, in my rope cutting test. That's compared to a good sort of, uh, another good stainless knife that you might come across, like a stainless uh, fixed blade. It might be the SE4 uh, and S35 for you, or the, the Falcon even uh, F1 in laminated COS. Those blades are going to hold, you know, half at best of, uh, you know, an edge as long as this one here did. So uh, really, really good on the edge retention. Uh, the Magna Cut on the um, corrosion resistance factor, it is currently wearing two what I would call tarnish spots that I can't simply just, you know, wipe off. And they are from the tackle box test that I, I did and sort of got uh, worsened by washing it in at the dishwasher. Again, don't do that. That's a stupid thing to do, but I am trying to, again, force um, force hardware onto this knife in a, in, a, in a shorter amount of time than perhaps, you know, I could have thought, you know, I can't just do one knife of every three years, although lately my output's been not the best. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, don't do those things. But uh, of all of it, it's only got two little tarnish marks, one on this side near the tip and one on this side, uh, sort of about you know, three millimeters away from the blade uh, apex. So yeah, uh, for what it's been through, I'd say that's a great result. And many other knives in other steels would be far, far worse for wear. Uh, given what I've done to it. So the Magna Cut is holding up uh, really, really well and has performed exceptionally well. It's a great fixed blade steel. This is on the harder side. I haven't done extreme, sort of I haven't shoved it into a, a block of wood and hammered it through or anything insane like that. But then a knife of a four inch length is never going to be used for that sort of task either. You can absolutely split up kindling sticks with it though, no worries at all. Whether you could hammer it into a tree and stand on it, well, Again, I'm not quite sure that that's uh, within the scope of even an abusive you know, scenario where you'd use this knife. In terms of the finish and the presentation of the knife, it's exceptional. Um, everything is nice and crowned, really well finished, grinds are even. Uh, the edge came really, really sharp from the factory. Uh, I haven't really had to do much in terms of re-sculpting it or anything like that to keep it uh, really, really nice. Um, there is a somewhat crowned spine, so there isn't the sharpest spine in the world. So this is not ferro rod compatible as you would typically use a knife. So if you are into the, the Bushcrafters uh, fire steel without using a little fire steel attachment to strike the rod and you like to use the spine of your blade, that is one area where this knife will perhaps let you down. So uh, you could either file it down yourself or you could just use the attached fire steel scraper as uncool as that is to do uh, that may be what you need to do if you're going to use this as your bushcraft knife i've just used this as my outdoor utility knife at home albeit outside of the winter period where you know when i when it is winter i do like to get down on my knees and do some bushcrafty stuff with my fireplace and i do end up using my creely knife with a fire steel on the spine so i get it i get that that's something that people do enjoy doing no shade, but uh, this one here, I haven't really felt the need to do that so far. And maybe that's just a seasonal thing. Maybe in winter I'll be, oh, just so upset that I can't, but uh, I'm sure I'll be fine. And I'm sure you would be fine as well. Handle-wise, ergonomics, it's a basic handle. You can see it's got one scallop for your index finger, accommodating all sorts of index finger uh, thicknesses, and then the other three fingers of your hand. Uh, if you've got sort of a, a mid to large size hand like mine, uh, will fit very happily on that uh, handle there, no problems at all. It's got enough width that way to fit a, a comfortable grip and you can really bear down on it. Uh, my cut test is often a pretty uh, uh, condign, um, you know, if the knife handles badly, that really, you know, sings in a, uh, in a cut test. Uh, this one here is a very pleasant knife to do a cut test with, no worries at all. Uh, there are some jimps on the back of the spine there to settle your thumb into. Uh, you know, if you really push in, they have some bite to them, and I guess that's what you're after for jimping, uh, so your hand won't slide around or lock in entirely if you're doing something like a shaving or a scraping job where you need absolute stability. Um, again, I could give or take them being there, but with them there, it's you know, not a problem at all, and it certainly does their, does their job just fine. Uh, the grind on the knife, it's a saber flat grind. So the flat grind goes from the apex up about uh, two thirds of the way towards the spine. It's not a particularly thick knife, so a saber grind is fine for that. Full flat is sometimes more appreciated. But then 
on a Sabre Grand, you do get that uh, ability to, to, if you are sort of a splitting, you know, doing a splitting task, or if you're cutting something that has, um, you know, sticks to the side of the blade, sometimes having that change of angle does make the material part a bit better. So better to cut cheese with a knife with a Sabre Grind than a, a fully flat ground knife, which can sort of get stuck. Uh, cutting tasks, I haven't had anything that this was bad at. Uh, it's not the most exceptional cutter, but you would not expect that from a somewhat rugged fixed blade knife. Uh, an exceptional cutter would be something like the Spyderco Centerfante 3, uh, like a hollow ground thin knife. Uh, the TRC, uh, or TRC uh, Neutron 2 or the uh, TRC uh, Neutron 2, something really thin, flat ground like that. Uh, for other cutting tasks, it's going to do a great job. Uh, something like perhaps the, what have we got here? Something like the uh, the Vanax Quiet Carry here, the Waypoint with a hollow ground uh, Vanax blade. That's going to cut to you know much thinner as well, a lot better. That's a true sort of cutting uh, preference knife, whereas this guy here is just after a durable, uh, well performing edge, and that's exactly what you get here. So works really well uh, in basically any cutting task. You're going to perform it uh, with it, but. Uh, you know, it's not going to be the uh, the prodigal son of cutting, returning, or anything like that. It's just, it's just great, not excellent. I'd say so. Eight out of ten. You know, good job. Uh, something that may be uh, like to your you know to your taste, or I guess overall a matter of taste, is the retention method. So it's a well-made Kydex sheath for a start. There is nothing wrong inherently with the sheath, but the matter of taste may be the retention method of the sheath. So you've got an ulti clip that is for within the pocket carry. So this sheath is to be desi is designed to be like a pocket within your pocket that the knife goes into. So you can have a bit of handle hanging out the top of your pants pocket, which then you can sort of drape a t-shirt over if you're going out with your uh, fixed blade knife. I mean, check your local laws. Uh, but if you're wearing it like me, just on your block or around your property or whatever, then I just sort of have my shirt tucked in and it's very sort of easily accessible. You can yank the knife out without worrying about the sheath pulling off. These ulti clips are very, very secure. They definitely grab around the seam of your pants pocket. No, you know, no give that you wouldn't sort of want or expect. Uh, so for me, it does absolutely fine. I've got the muscle memory down to be able to return the knife without really looking or anything like that. You can sort of find the find the open kydex pretty easily with the knife if, as long as you're not being completely absent-minded but i can certainly see uh where some people may have just preferred this to be an externally carried sort of differently attached uh knife sheath and i'm sure you could get a, yourself a tech lock and fill that you know figure that out yourself but the way it comes uh, with the ulti clip just so you know it's comes it's coming with for like within pocket carry rather than off the belt carry or something similar okay I really like it, does absolutely fine for me, but just be aware. Now price to me is where I became a little bit more self-conscious. Uh, full disclosure, this knife was sent to me by TIC. They wanted me to review this knife. Uh, I'm not sure if they will do that again because I took a while to review it, um, you know, for various reasons, including being not super happy to rush a review about, but then also sort of getting caught up with life and stuff in general. So eventually we get there and hopefully this uh, end product is something that is thorough enough for their liking. And obviously it's a positive review, but it is the thing that sort of gave me the most pause. And uh, yeah, there is no two ways about it. Um, yeah, as fine as a product is and as, you know, as good as the story is and as small as the company is and like as, as it's obviously made in a part of the world that treats their workers well and has all those things that happen um, that add to the cost of a knife it doesn't change what money is worth to you. So if you work a job that you, where you get paid, you know, $2,200 a fortnight, uh, and that is, you know, to cover everything, you know, after tax, so it covers your rent and all of your life's needs, uh, then yeah, spending 400-ish dollars on a fixed blade knife on any day of, of the year is going to be, you know, something that's worth a few questions at least. Uh, what I could say is that you are certainly getting one of the finest examples of a fixed blade knife for that money. Um, but again, if you're ever in that sort of point where you have $450, then I mean, if you have anything else to spend it on before, what is essentially a luxury purchase, which is any knife that is more than say $200 is a luxury purchase. It's, I'm sure there's a few baseline knives, maybe that's a good topic for a video, but anything of this price range, it's a luxury. So. If your luxury money is after a fixed blade knife uh, and you have no illusions about you know all of, all of your other debts are paid and everything else you need to spend money on has been has been accomplished, then 
you can buy this with confidence. It's the, from a good company, it's made really well. It's uh, made with possibly the best materials uh, you'd want a four inch uh, multi-purpose fixed blade knife to be made of. Uh, then yeah, you're absolutely safe to buy, as safe as you can ever be spending, as I said, over 400 Australian dollars on a luxury item. So yeah, four months down, all sorts of use, uh, very extensive. Uh, is this the best fixed blade in my collection? Uh, yeah, it would be, like both objectively and also from like the opinion that I've formed and like my own personal taste now. Uh, yes, I like this more than my, I like this more than the DBK um, knife. I feel like it covers more purposes for me, uh, which is also a TRC. Uh, product. I like this more than like the Falcon Eve and F1 Pro. I like this more than the uh, than the, um, the SE S35 VN. You know, even if mine didn't have the the roll that I put in it. Uh, but you know, I, I like that as a knife when it, in perfect condition. Whatever. This is preferable to that. It actually feels like a really refined version of something like that. Uh, it's an excellent knife. It's a really, um, you know, it's a good thing to have. It's going to do all of your jobs and it's going to really withstand a lot of uh, rough abuse due to its, you know, quite superb construction and material choices and, and whatnot. Uh, as I said, if you are looking to buy a luxury, if you're looking to buy once, cry once, if you're looking to sell a couple of, you know, cheaper fixed blade knives and get the good one, uh, this guy for a four inch multi purpose, multi use. Um, belt or pocket carry knife, uh, I guess pocket carry knife, uh, probably is at the, um, the the top of the pack at the moment. S tier, you know, very, very, uh, very well done indeed. The TRC Polheim MagnaCut G10. All right, guys, that's the review. Thanks to TRC for thinking of me, thinking you want to see me review your knife. Um, hopefully I didn't gross you out too much with some of the testing uh, or upset your sensibilities too much with some of the other testing. And I'll see you all in the next film. Goodbye. What about you, Yoshi? Do you have any final thoughts about the TRC Polheim in MagnaCut Companion Blade? I have muscular dystrophy. Classic Yoshi.